Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's session. My name is Lorraine Burgess, and I don't need to tell you what we are going to do today. Trigonometry, my dears. Trigonometry, trigonometrical graphs for today. We will be working from the resource pack, so I would like you to open it up on page 14. Page 14 of your resource pack. I see a number of my friends out there joined us already. Hello, Peakview, Sinanjonga, and Desmond Tutu. Special greetings to all of you. Right, we are ready to start with trigonometrical graphs, and the examples will be found, can be found on page 14. Before we start, we need to recap very briefly our previous knowledge on trigonometrical graphs. So I'm going to go through your previous knowledge, and as we go along, we will take you to the problem setting. So here we go, starting with our basic knowledge. Right, the basic sine graph. Very plain, and we all should know him by now. The shape, very familiar, a normal wave. The amplitude is one. Amplitude is one. The period we also know is 360 degrees. That implies that we have one complete cycle over 360 degrees. How do we identify this particular graph? And to me, what stands out is the fact that this graph starts at zero. So it starts at zero, and there we have the basic sine graph. All other graphs will develop from this graph. Also important is to note where my intercepts and my main points are. We know this is 360 degrees, and everything else happens exactly midway. So it will cut here at 180 degrees. 90, we reach a maximum, and at 270, we have a minimum. Let's move on to our next graph. Cos graph, the shape, once again, a, a wave. Amplitude, we can see it is one because we can see that distance. That is my amplitude of my wave. The period, 360. Nothing different from the sine graph. But this one starts at one. So the only way we can distinguish between a sine and a cosine graph is the fact that it starts at one. You'll notice that your intercepts is now different. And once again, once I have one complete cycle from here right up to there, that is one complete cycle, everything else happens exactly midway. So midway, I would get my minimum value. And midway, my x-intercept, and at 270, also an x-intercept. The tan graph coming up. Still nothing new to you guys. The shape, I don't know because it's not a wave. <laughs> call it whatever you want to call it, little snakes, worms, whatever. That's the funny looking shape. The amplitude, no amplitude because it's not a wave. But I know that this particular thing, the period, is 180 degrees. In other words, one of these little swiggles will be across 180 degrees. That is a big difference from our previous two graphs. Therefore, that eight stand comes to my, sorry, the eight comes to mind for me. And if we look at that eight very carefully, you'll notice that I can use that particular shape to identify my graph. There is exactly the same shape the way my tan graph should look. Identification, how do I identify it? And the main feature, the only feature we have, is that we know that tan of 45 degrees equals 1, which implies if I have two tan 
45 degrees, the value will be 2, etc. So, that is the three basic shapes on which everything is based on. Possibility that you will get these easy one in the exam? Practically zero. So let's move on. We need to see the sine, cos and tan graph in this format. Y equals A sine BX. And we need to know what each of these letters mean. Because these letters influence the graph so that we can create new shapes and new equations from there. So I'm going to take you into looking at the amplitude and the period quickly. The values of A and B. Once again, still nothing new to you guys. Please note the value of A. A stands before sine. You can see in this particular case, A happens to be 1. B is the value, the coefficient of x. In other words, the coefficient of that angle. And that value is the value that we need to look at as well. So let's see. Let's start. I'm going to change my amplitude firstly. Watch as I move it. Sorry, I did not select my value of A. And here we go. If A is 2, please look what happened. Quite clearly, you can see that my wave definitely enlarged. The wave is now, my amplitude is now 2. If I do it, take it to 3, my amplitude turns to 3 and I can do it with 4 as well. Let's come back. Minus 1. Minus 2. Minus 3. So the value in front of A of sine, the coefficient of sine, that affects my amplitude. So let's play with B quickly. If I change B and I make B2, the amplitude now remained the same, but as you can notice, I now have two periods over 360 degrees. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to count out the periods. I'm picking up my marker and there I go. That is one cycle. And from here, there's my second cycle and there I have my 360 degrees. So the value of B therefore affects my period and if it is 2, then it means I must have 2 cycles over 360 degrees because that is my normal period for the basic sine graph. I'm just taking my marker back because I want to play this game one more time. I'm going to lift my B and I'm going to make my B3 this time. Let's look at the period once again. Let's count them out. There I have one period, one cycle, two cycles, and now I have three cycles up till there. So the value of three tells me that there are three complete cycles over one normal period of 360 degrees. Okay. Let's continue. So we know what the value of A means and we know what B means. So let's move on. I've chosen the example of cos this time just to show you that the same applies. A affects my amplitude and B affects my period. So if I have Y equals cos 3X, then I know I should have three complete cycles over 360 degrees. So how do I calculate the new period? The period we calculate by saying it is 360 degrees divided by 3 because I need to have 
three cycles. So each cycle therefore becomes 120 degrees. I hope you are still all with me and still going strong. We also know that we need to shift them, to shift the graphs, either left to right and up and down. The only thing is we get confused with all these letters, and maybe this will help you. If I, we know there might be a letter in front of sign, that's the amplitude I've dealt with him. But if I see this, I have sine, and there's my angle minus P. These two are joined by means of a bracket, which means that this P can only influence my x-axis. So I expect something to happen across this move, this way. So if I click now, then this is what I can expect. There we go. So if P is positive, I can either move left or right within that. So if P is positive, then I shift my graph to the left. If P is negative, then my graph shifts to the right. And we'll tackle that again. We know our friend Q coming from the line graph, the parabola, and all our other graphs. And if I click, see what Q does to my graph, Q moves my graph up and down. And this, these P and Q has the same effect on any other graph as well. Okay. At this stage, we are ready to start our first problem.